All right, let's get cooking. Feel free to use your favorite type of green onion. You can also substitute with onion if you prefer. The key today is to use a very small amount of vegetable. I love to use a lot of vegetable for health reasons, but today I want to prioritize the taste, so I'll only use this green onion. Let's get our vegetable in another dish. By the way, after the yaki ramen, I'll also show you a recommended beer snack that I've been making a lot of lately, so stay tuned. Today we are using chicken. Let's cut it into bite-sized pieces so it cooks evenly. We tend to remove the skin these days. I encourage you all to use chicken with the skin on and make it crispy. The key is to season it beforehand. Sprinkle with sake. Salt and pepper. And mix well. I sprinkle it again with salt and pepper to make sure it was evenly distributed. While we are preparing the noodles, let the chicken marinate in this flavor. Prepare a large pot of boiling water and cook the noodles. The package says to cook for 3 to 3 and a half minutes, so I cooked for 3 minutes. Since the noodles will be stir fried for a short time later, it's fine to cook them for almost the same time as the package instructions. Since the noodles are coated with a little flour, be sure to rinse them with cold water after cooking. And make sure to drain the water well. Next, let's stir fry the chicken. I'm using this clear type of sesame oil. You can use any oil you like, such as vegetable oil or olive oil. Since we won't be stir frying for a long time once the noodles are added, I'll cook the chicken until it's almost cooked through. There were some pieces that were a bit large, so I cut them with scissors. Once the chicken is almost cooked through, turn off the heat. Add the noodles here. If you are using a pan that's not teflon coated, the noodles will stick, so the key is to turn off the heat at this point. Add the seasonings here. Add the mirin, soy sauce, and sugar. This is the same ratio as the sauce for yakitori. That's why it goes so well with chicken. Yakitori is Japanese style squirt chicken. Don't turn on the heat yet. Let's turn off the heat and mix so that the seasoning liquid doesn't evaporate before I coat the noodles and chicken. Once everything is mixed well, add the green onions. And now turn on the heat. I recommend adding the green onions at the end like this as it keeps the flavor strong and the texture slightly crunchy. Stir fry over medium heat to cook the green onions slightly and reduce the sauce while letting it soak into the ingredients. I forgot to add garlic. I'm using garlic paste from a tube, but it's also delicious to chop fresh garlic and stir fry it in oil before adding the chicken. Feel free to add more garlic if you like. This is a new type of yaki ramen that is different from ordinary ramen or yakisoba. I'm sure you'll be addicted to it too. Please give it a try.
Next, I'd like to introduce you to a simple and healthy okonomiyaki that we've been hooked on lately. It's perfect for people who are on a diet or want to eat a lot of vegetables. First, let's shred the cabbage. This is spring cabbage, which is a very delicious cabbage that only comes out at this time of year. The leaves are fluffier and softer than regular cabbage. It's perfectly fine to shred it a little thicker. And now let's use some lotus root, rankon as well. I often use Japanese yam, but today I'm going to try with lotus root. You can also substitute potatoes. Once you've peeled it, grate it. If you have any other vegetable in your fridge, you can chop them up and add them as well. I thought that lotus root would be sticky, but it wasn't as sticky as I expected. If you can get Japanese yam or Chinese yam, I recommend using that instead. That will make the butter easier to work with, also very fluffy and tasty. Add one egg. Add one to two tablespoon of wheat flour. You can also add potato starch. Add some shantan here, or your favorite stock powder. Add salt and pepper. And hondashi. Mix well. Adding yam would make it fluffier and more cohesive, but it should be okay with lotus root too. Heat some oil in a fry pan. Add the butter you made earlier a little at a time. It's difficult to flip large pancakes, so I'm going to make them like small pancakes. I think it would have been better to use potato starch instead of wheat flour because it's a bit difficult to handle. It might be easier to make with potatoes and potato starch, but since it's made with lotus root, it's the healthiest and most nutritious. Now that it's shaped, cook over medium heat for about 3 minutes. Once it's browned, flip it over. They are small, so they are very easy to make and difficult to fail. Once you have flipped them all, add a little sake and steam them. Steam for about 3 minutes and it's done. If you want to make them a little crispy, remove the lid and cook for about 1 minute. Serve on the plate and top with your favorite okonomi sauce and mayonnaise. I didn't have any okonomi sauce, so I used tonkatsu sauce instead. It's still delicious. Don't forget the Japanese mayonnaise. Sprinkle with bonito flakes and aonori seaweed. By the way, you can also add seafood mix or thinly sliced pork for extra flavor. Please try making this with leftover veggies in your fridge. Thank you so much for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel. If you are already a subscriber and would like to support our channel, please join our membership. Membership feedback will be reflected in content creation. See you in the next video.